Hi, this is John McCarthy with RopeSmart. Today we're going to be doing a product review on our Blue Viper Dally Wrap and our Blue Viper Bands. One thing I want to share with everybody is the history behind our Dally Wraps, first off. You know, over 10 years ago, we had an experience where uh, we were going really fast practicing and the rope got underneath the saddle horn rubber, um, caused a coil to come down over my hand, get four fingers in the dally, and almost cut off four fingers. And needless to say, it, uh, it scared me quite, quite badly and there was a lot of uh, insecurities that rose from that a lot of confidence issues that, that left and um, it put me on a path to really study polymers and polymer science and learn more about what what would really work better at the saddle horn and ultimately to try to develop a safer product. Since that point in time we've had over 25 different compounds, we've done tens of thousands of dollars worth of research and testing um, and refined and purified our rubber compounds to bring to you what is today our Gen 7 Blue Viper wrap and our Blue Viper bands. When we talk about these two products, what we're really shooting for was a happy medium. We needed uh, something that would grab and stop the rope really, really well, that yet wouldn't burn off in the rope and fill the crowns and slicken the rope out, make it ineffective. Um, wanted something that was soft enough to where it would allow deep rope set, but yet hard enough that it would be tough enough that it wouldn't just shred under just average conditions. And so really it's taken, a, a, it's a been a long path to get here. And uh, today's dally wraps are by far the best that we've ever put out and uh, we are still doing further research we're still working on compounds and uh, if we can ever bring out anything that's better and superior we surely will one thing i want to talk about in our blue viper system that's different than anything else that we've ever put out is that we embrace the one element that's in inner tube that's really really good and the reason that so many of us have used inner tube for years and years and years um, the problem with inner tube is that there's tons of other fillers uh, inconsistent fillers and compounding that is just as long as it holds air they're happy and um, so with that's where we get our inconsistency in our different performance of different types of tubes uh, thicknesses of tubes a lot of people they think one inner tube is is better than another what they don't realize is that one day they might use aluminum as a filler the next day they might use wax as a filler the next day they might use clays as fillers and there's never a real consistency uh, with inner tubes other than the fact that they all hold air so with our compound, there's one element in inner tube that's in all of those, those inner tubes that performs well under heat. It's also what's in drag car tires. Hence, when a drag car tire burns out and gets hot, gets sticky, and it grabs and helps the car launch. Well, that element in stopping a rope that's running or getting hot on the horn is a positive element. We do incorporate that in our brand new Blue Viper wraps and our Blue Viper bands. So um, what we wanted to do also in the design is we've got our full base wrap design and the, and the reason we have this base wrap design is to stop the rope from getting underneath the base of the saddle horn. No matter how good our saddle horn rubber is, if our rope travels underneath the base of the saddle horn and hits the, hits the saddle horn, it does an extreme amount of damage to the saddle horns which most people don't ever get to see because they never fully unwrap their saddle horn, but it breaks the spine of the rope, it lets the rope start running and when a running rope gets going it's very 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 hard to shut off. If, it's almost impossible, honestly. Um, I think all of us that have team roped enough have lost some ropes. Um, we've been in the position where we're down to the knot and we're holding it as much as we can, trying to get a flag. And those kind of situations are almost always caused with the rope going underneath and starting to run or a horse ducking on the head side and the rope running before it ever gets a good bite on the saddle horn. So um, having an element, some of the elements that we have on our compound, when they do get friction, they do get warm, they do get tacky, and they do help a little bit trying to stop those ropes. but the design of the base wrap has a wide lip in it to seal off the base of the saddle horn and that ultimately is the goal to keep the rope on top of rubber not underneath the rubber so we're going to talk about that as we rewrap the saddle horn the bands that we make today we call it our viper bands have been super super popular with all the ropers headers and healers alike especially on the heel side because they can build up a base wrap like this cover it in bands like you see here on my saddle and this is my my wrap combo of choice i use the base wrap to seal off the base of my horn but i like bands on top because Ultimately, when I'm healing, I'm getting hit very hard, breaking one or two bands here and there. My rope's getting a lot sharper, uh, more of an impact kind of hit, whereas my saddle horn heading it usually gets more of a gradual snap to it and doesn't, doesn't have to take that much, that much torture. So um, I use a combination of it. But on the heel side, just being able to replace one band at a time as we break them is, is better. It allows us to uh, uh, piecemeal the horn together versus having to replace the entire wrap every time we cut through it. And with our old wrap system, that was, was one of the weak points was that a healer would cut through several layers and have no way really to patch it up. Ultimately, you'd be doing irreparable damage to your saddle horn wrap and you'd have to take it off. Um, one thing that we've heard from a lot of ropers, both headers and healers, is on the lifespan of the rubber. Um, everybody would like to have a rubber that would last forever. Uh, the bottom line is, is rubber is rubber to be effective. It's got to have certain variables and parameters about it that are going to be 
the best of both worlds, so to speak. And obviously, lifespan, as much as we would like it, um, I could, you know, we could all compound a rubber that would last an extremely amount, long amount of time, um, but it would be very, very ineffective about stopping a rope. So, the lifespan we've got here at the Blue Viper Wraps, it's kind of a happy medium. It's working really, really well, lasting quite a while. At the same point in time, we have to be realistic about it, and we're going to have to replace our rubber at some point in time. So what I want to do is I want to go ahead and I'm going to unwrap the saddle horn and then we're going to wrap it from the base all the way back up and show you the process of installing your wrap and how to use bands on top. When you get your base wrap, it comes in a package looking just like this, has a couple extra green bands in it. If you're going to head on this wrap primarily, you can use the green bands underneath the base of your horn, then put your, your base wrap on top and you can choose to or not to add extra bands. I personally like a couple extra bands on there, just prolongs the, the life of my wrap. And um, when we talk about the lifespan, again, one thing I want to mention is that we have a very pure, very virgin polymer. And um, much like any rubber, I mean, over time it's going to crack, uh, as they call it, dry rot, things of that nature. We're here talking about rubber. But one thing about our compound being very, very pure is uh, it is affected by the natural elements a little bit quicker than, say, tube rubber would be. So, um, but again, um, with our compound not building up on the ropes, literally every time you purchase one of our wraps or a bag of blue bands, I can money back guarantee everybody that uses our product that we will at a minimum save them at least one rope. And when you look at the price of ropes today being $40, $45, and you've been able to buy a pack of dally wraps for uh, 20 bucks, it's, it's pretty simple math to figure out that a $20 investment, if it saves you a minimum of $45, uh, it's a pretty smart move, and I don't know why everybody wouldn't be uh, uh, changing what they wrap their saddle horn with. So let's go ahead and get started on the install of the, of the band. On the base wrap design, you can see it's tapered in the beginning, has a hole in the beginning, and then it's got a wide section right here in the wrap. This allows us to gradually build up a saddle horn, but then at the end ultimately seal it from the top to bottom, which is going to help prevent our rope from ever getting underneath. And you notice on this saddle here too, it's a very clean saddle horn, there's no damage, rope has never gotten underneath the saddle horn or done anything to it. And of course, we've also got some footage here to show you of my, my old heading saddle and healing saddle, both actually front and back side of the horn you'll see just how much damage is really done to a horn on tube rubber or bands by themselves because the rope does get underneath. And so we can look at that and see the difference of saddle horn health here as well. So we just start by putting the little circle over the top of the saddle horn. And what I like to do is I like to stand over here on the left side. And the analogy I like to give you is this when you're wrapping your saddle horn. A calf roper holds with one hand, wraps with the other hand, holds, wraps, and then that's a completed tie. When we're installing the saddle horn wrap, I use my left hand just to hold like a calf roper would hold the legs together. So I stretch a little bit, put my thumb on it and hold it. I come around the horn, I'll do a half twist, put it around, have my thumb hold it get my wrap situated, just continue to stretch lightly and wrap and hold it. And I continue to do this as the, as the horn builds up gradually, just continue to wrap and hold it. So when we reach this last layer of the wide section of the wrap, what we want to do is we're going to, it's going to fill up the entire horn. And when we reach this last section, we're going to go down around the back of the saddle swell, back down through the gullet, pull it out the front. We're going to go over the saddle horn. We're gonna flip up the left side, hold it with our right thumb, pull down underneath, out and around, just the left side only. That's where we start our dally. And then fold this down right here, and that is gonna seal off the base of our saddle horn and keep any rope from ever getting underneath. If you start to do a lot of damage down here at the base of this thing, you need to understand uh, this system here is gonna pay for itself every time you put it on uh, exponentially, not just one rope. It'll probably save you more like two or three or four ropes on average. So don't hesitate to change this out. Don't wait till it's too late and you lose a rope in a competition. Um, you know, when you see it getting ratty, change it out. Make sure you keep good rubber on your saddle horn. I mean, this is where you tie all your horse's talents, all his athleticism and all your talents and everything else together. This is the one thing that holds it together and that's why I think it's so important that we really do pay attention to how we wrap our saddle horn. From this point here, heading or healing, I go ahead and I build this up with some, some bands. So let me get those. In your band pack here on the back of this paperwork in here, it is gonna show you about you know, building up a brand new complete saddle horn full of blue rubber. Don't put this over tube rubber. You have to understand this is softer than tube rubber. It doesn't have the, all the toughness that tube rubber does possess. And if you're putting a softer product over a harder product, and then you have a hard rope on top of it, the soft material in between is, makes sense that it's going gonna, it's gonna to lose the battle. It's much like putting your finger under a car tire on pavement and burning out, your finger is going to lose. So when you're building up your saddle horn, you do want to use our product all the way from the base, all the way out. Don't leave some of that old hard tube rubber underneath. Inner tube is a dead polymer. It means it doesn't have much rebound or much bounce. So it's not going to do any benefit to leave some of it underneath. So as we start to wrap, one of the other things I want to talk about, and we talk about dry rot rubber, you can buy yourself an 80,000 mile car tire. You can park it on a car 
for a year and never drive it, and you'll have a dry rotted 80,000 mile tire. There's certain silica inside rubber that slowly separates over time if it's not being used. Hence, you could drive that 80,000 mile car tire every day and you'd get 80,000 miles out of it. Or you could let it sit for a year and you'd have a dry rotted tire. So when you go to put your bands on, it is helpful to stretch your bands a little bit, reconnect the silica that's inside these things, the strands, stretch it a little bit before you wrap your saddle horn with it. It'll increase the life of the rubber and it's gonna make it, it's just gonna make it grab better. So we're gonna start over here. Now, one thing I wanna talk about is we're wrapping the saddle horn. If I'm heading, most of my torture is to the front of the saddle horn and to the side. If I'm healing, it's the back of the saddle horn and the left side. So, for example, I'm just going to do this if I was heading, and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put my crisscrosses on the back so my rope is not going to lay right on my crisscrosses. It's going to allow my bands to last longer and not break as easily. Hence, I'm going to crisscross back here for heading. I'm going to crisscross up here in the front for healing, put my bands flat around the back. I'm going to create a lot of shape to my horn, too. That's real important you have some shape. So, let's go ahead and get started here. I'm going to stretch it a little bit, crisscross, come around crisscross, come around, crisscross, and, and come on around. I'm going to continue to do this till I get a good base down here, and I'm going to work my way up my saddle horn. So again, I'm doing my crisscrosses on the back side, taking each of my bands here. That's band number two. Now I'm wrapping one of our RopeSmart Pro Series saddles that has a, a special build to the horn where it's got a good lip here on the back side, so you can get plenty of rubber buildup on the back of the horn as well as the front. And this is important when you're heading and healing because heading you're pulling, you use the front of that cap. Healing, we're dialing and stopping rope back here, we're using the back of the cap. So you have to check out our Pro Series saddles. You'll love them. There's some things different in the swell design, rig and placement, and everything else. Let's stretch this a little bit. Let's go ahead and just build this up. As I get like that's my fourth or fifth band on here. I might, if I'm healing, I'll take my last couple bands and not have them quite as tight. So I'll just stretch them a little bit, leave them on the outside. And I like a nice straight build of my saddle horn. I don't want my rope to walk up my saddle horn as it takes weight. And so that gives me a nice average size saddle horn, a little bit bigger than my cap, all the way down straight, a good base. Everything is sealed off here. If I burn off any of these bands, I can simply replace one or two bands at a time. It uh, allows me to keep my saddle horn fresh. Uh, don't have to worry about having my entire base wrap damaged all at one time. So again, this is my combo of choice. It's the Viper base wrap with bands on top. I head and heel on this both. Obviously my head saddle looks pretty nice. It's not usually as torn up as bad, whereas my heel saddle's got stuff kind of hanging off. As, as healers, we do def, uh, just a lot more damage to our saddle horn rubber. That's just that's just a fact and we're not going to get away from that. One of the benefits about our product when it comes to the heel side of things is that the temperature range is much higher on our rubber. And there's, uh, there's something you need to keep in mind about this. Uh, one is a big benefit and one is just a warning, something you need to think about. Uh, on, the ben on the benefit side, if you think about the, the tread or the, the depth of tread on a truck tire when you go into a mud hole, obviously a, a, a mud tire with more, more tread, more depth is going to get better grip and it's going to do better in that mud. A bald tire is going to do less good and it's going to spin a lot more. But as a heel rope gets dallied on and the crowns are less full and less full, you know, by dally five, you might have 15, 20% of the crown full of rubber, which means you're going to have 15 to 20% less crown to bite to stop that rope. Hence, in healing, we'll start feeling our rope slide a little bit. It'll burn a little bit. We'll get hit real hard, move a foot, two feet, three feet. Pretty soon, that whole rope is slick and we have no bite to it at all. So um, we're usually by Dally 10 to 15, we're throwing away a rope because it just won't hold anymore. And we've got two, three, four, six foot of burnt up coils. And we don't dally at a different spot. It's not like we can move up or down the rope for a choice to dally. We're going to dally at the same spot theoretically or pretty close to it unless we pantyhose a steer and it takes some coils away. And that brings me to the second point um, about the, the safety side of it and something you need to be warned about uh, when it comes to prepping your rope uh, uh, to dally on. We've all heard about people that'll uh, drag ropes in the dirt, they'll bang them around, they'll stretch them, all this kind of stuff. The bottom line is this, they dip ropes in wax to seal them, keep humidity out, keep a nice feel to the swing and everything else. Wax is a lubricant. They put wax on the bottom of snowboards, skis, everything else to make them go faster. And we all know that friction creates heat and heat melts wax. So when you take a dally with a fresh rope, brand new rope, you dally on the saddle horn and it gets tight, that is instant friction, instant heat, and it instantly melts the wax on your rope, becomes a lubricant, 
and it's no surprise why a fresh rope runs so bad. And when a rope starts running and slicing through rubber and burning through your hand, the chances of you holding on to that knot or not, I mean, when you've got a lot of money on the line especially, the last thing you want to you want to think is, well, I should have taken 30 or 45 seconds to try to get that wax off my crowns. And on healing, when you pantyhose one, like I was mentioning earlier, you're no longer dowling where you normally would. So you don't want to just clean that one or two foot section. You want to clean it all the way to the tail, because as we dally on one and say it's at pantyhose, it's going to take a coil or two from us and put us further down our rope. And if we're dallying on a very fresh section of our rope, we, we shouldn't be surprised when our rope takes off running. And on the head side, if we really, really go after one and we reach, bobble your dally or whatever, and you get to a different spot on your rope you've never dallied on, again, you're going to have instant run, and you're going to have a heck of a time getting it shut off. And uh, again, losing a rope in competition to me is one of the things I get very, very aggravated with. Um, especially if I feel it's I didn't prep the rope well enough or maybe I didn't have the base of my horn built up good enough. And you know, in the old days on inner tube, if I saw a black rubber down my rope and I never once intentionally slid, I knew that it was taking rope from me by going under the saddle horn and running, leaving black streaks on my jeans. I didn't do that on purpose. It was just part of heading. And today with this horn being sealed off, my rope's not going underneath. It's not running as much. It's not cutting across my jeans. And when you, when you really think about the healing aspect of it, if a header is not leaking a steer back to a healer in the middle of his delivery, the healer's catching more. So keeping it tight at the saddle horn and keeping a steer moving out in front is absolutely critical. So not only is sealing up the base of your horn safer, it has huge advantages in the competition arena. And again, when we start thinking about rope prep, what I like to do is I like to take my brand new ropes and I will build up my loop, find my spoke, and from the section where I'm gonna dally and back, I'll just simply put it underneath my foot in the dirt and I'll saw my rope back and forth move down the rope a little bit and I'll do it all the way to the tail. And then each time I rope, when my rope is rested for a while in the bag, maybe it's been warm, some more wax has leached out, I take a handful of dirt and I really rub that rope down. I do not want a fuzzy rope. I don't want to drag it around and make it fuzzy. We've got a big machine that tests ropes and dallies, drops weight so we can be scientific about our products compared to other products. And fuzzy ropes don't grab as good. But ropes with the wax cleaned off the crowns grab probably almost twice as good. So take a little time. 45, 60 seconds, prep your rope all the way to the tail. Make sure it's clean of as much wax as you can, good handfuls of dirt, rubbing it up and down, creating some friction, getting that wax a little warm so it'll melt off into the dirt is, is super essential. If you'd like to reach out to us, please message us through our, our Facebook page or message us through our website. We'll be glad to help you with any tips or tricks uh, in wrapping your saddle horn. Um, if you have any issues uh, with the product and you're, you're wanting some help, feel free. We've got a sales staff and we're here to support you. Um, we want to thank you for taking a few minutes today to, to sit down and watch this video and learn more about our Blue Viper wraps and our bands. And uh, we look forward to seeing you down the road. And until then, we hope you rope smart and always rope, reel, and win.